say your name and your role. My name is Clay Fenema, and I'm the lead singer of Tracy Tang. Can you give background information on the band? Yes, we started about two, a little over two years ago. We started, uh, actually we began our musical career as a talent show in high school. Me and a couple of friends, uh, we were seniors in high school, we wanted to decide to do a talent show. We thought that would be cool. Okay, so we all formed. None of us really had ever played in bands before, ever, mm -hmm. except for like the school band. And we wanted to do a couple songs. So we did like Judas Priest tune, we did a Twisted Sister song, we did an Extreme song, and we just fell in love with it. We fell in love with playing live being on stage, even though we sucked, but we just loved it. So we decided to keep it going, and, uh, you know, so some of us parted ways, this and that, that's what happens after high school, but we kept playing, okay, so then after a couple years of playing, or a year maybe, we formed Trixie Tanks, we decided to change the name, and grab a couple guys from other areas, and so forth, and that was it. The rest was history. Yeah, the name question again. <laughs> <laughs> the name was from the cartoon Fairly Odd Parents. <laughs> and I'll tell you why, okay? Okay. Because me and my buddy used to watch that cartoon, and we had an old band at the time that we hated the name of. We actually cringed to say the name. When people would ask us our, what was our band name, we didn't even want to tell them. Because we didn't <laughs> like the name that much. It was so stupid. It's like you don't want to promote your own band. It was so, it was so dumb. So then we were like, well, if we, did, if we get more serious with this whole thing and then we keep it going, we'll change our name eventually. So then me and my drummer were having a couple beers one day, watching Fairly Odd Parents and what else is there to do. And we saw, or we heard that name, Tricks and Tang, at the car one of the characters, and we're like, man, if we ever change our name, if we, can, if we continue this, it's going to be Tricks and Tang. That's so 80s and it sounded so cool. And uh, sure enough, that was it. And then we, ch we changed the spelling of it. And we're like, screw it. Tricksy Tang it is. And it just has a ring to it. People remember the name. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, yeah. What is your favorite song to play live? It's a tie between Wild Side by Molly Crew and Mama I'm Coming Home by Ozzy. Now I say it's two covers because I I really enjoy playing cover songs that have mm -hmm. meaning to it. I love playing our original music too, but it's it's honestly not my favorite to play. Right. Um, Wild Side has significance to it because Motley Crue was the reason I started playing music. Because me and my buddy saw them live, front row, when we were like juniors in high school. And it blew me away. And I said, this is it. I'm gonna, this is what I want to do. And that song, Wild Side, just speaks volumes to who they were as a band. They were so cool and they just were all about being wild and, and everything like that. So that song is just so cool. And then Ozzy, Mama, I'm Coming Home, that's also my favorite because my mom passed away a little over two years ago, and that was her favorite song. Okay. It was actually played at her funeral, so it was just, it's a really cool song. To do. And we actually wanted to do it tonight, and we got cut short in time, so yeah. we didn't. But like I know, I was about to start it, and then all of a sudden I got a signal from my guitar player. We didn't have one, had one, one more song left, so yeah. unfortunately we couldn't, but it is what it is, so definitely. Hopefully you guys don't have to, because um, it was a party bus, right? Yes, tonight has been a nightmare, and that's what I happens when we play. I would not be paying for that. <laughs> that's what happens when we play on Friday the 13th, I'm telling you. Yeah. <laughs> I think Cheryl was saying this was like one of your first times coming down to Diesel playing. Diesel. It's my first time playing Diesel, yep. Okay. And I really like it here. It's, it's yeah. a cool place. Yeah. Frank, the sound, it's, it's very cool. Yeah. So, we haven't played Detroit a ton, but I'm very excited to be in Detroit. And we're going to be back here in a couple weeks with Jackal. And then we're going to be back in Westland at the end of the summer with Faster Pussycat. At Token? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I probably be at most of those. Good. So. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> Who have been some of your favorite people to play with? Well, I just mentioned Jackal there, one of my favorites. Um, the show in a couple weeks here will be our sixth time with them. So like a regular, we anytime they're in the area, usually mm -hmm. we play with them. Um, so we're excited about that, and those guys are so, they're so cool, they're so good, and they're, they never stop playing, they literally just do not stop touring. It's just awesome, because they're a hard-working band, mm -hmm. and they're amazing. Yeah. And we really enjoy, we really enjoy playing with them, because their audience that they bring really fits with the audience that likes us, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So it works out well. Um, we've played with... Well, we've played with Faster Pussycat before. They're one of my favorite bands of all time. And they're so cool and so underrated. Um, Striper we got with next next month. We're going to play with Striper. I'm excited about that. 
that's also what token. That's in Battle Creek. That oh, in really? Yeah. Okay. And then okay. Creek, yeah. And then um, I gotta say, besides Jackal, maybe maybe LA Guns. Okay. One of them. That was really fun. Or even. We did an after party for Vince Neil one time, and that was really, really cool. Even though he didn't play, but he was there, it was right, cool. yeah. that was a neat show. Right. But yeah, we've played with a lot of those big bands, and we really, really enjoy it because it's like we grew up with those bands. Mm -hmm. You know, we grew up listening to those bands, and now we're playing with them. It's just very, right, it's very yeah. neat. Yeah, yeah. So. I guess what really made you decide to kind of go back to the whole 80s type thing? Well, the the, the, I mean, the cliche to say from somebody in my position is that all oh, my parents listened to it. Or, I can say that to a point, but really they did. They weren't really that musically inclined mm -hmm. or musically interested, honestly. I mean, they liked it, but they weren't like die hard. My kids are going to love the mm -hmm. 80s rock because I do. It wasn't that way at all. Um, everybody goes through phases when they're young of what types of music they like, or you just listen to what your parents listen to. And my parents listened to a wide variety of things, mm -hmm. but I had four older brothers who none of them really cared so much for rock and roll until they got a little bit older. Mm -hmm. It was always like rap music and whatever your friends listened to, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And I had a phase of that and I, nothing clicked. I was really young and I, and I just thought, hey, it's cool. Like, and I, nothing, it didn't do nothing for me. And I, I was like, this is stupid. And then I discovered 80s and rock and roll in general. And 80s was so cool because it was so all about partying and all about having fun and all about just, you know, mm -hmm. and it's, it's just, I don't like depressing music so much, I mean there's some great stuff, but I guess what I like to do is just have a good time and that music just really meant that to me, it really was all about just having a good time and it was, it's like I didn't get sick of it, you know, music nowadays, you hear it on the radio and then it goes away after a week, mm -hmm. you know, it's just like meaningless. Yeah. And then these songs, I list my entire iPod is full of 80s music. And I like when these bands from the 80s put out new stuff, because that's all cool too. Mm -hmm. But those old hits that I, I can listen to non-stop, um, and I don't ever get sick of them. Right. You know, and I keep listening to another, I'm like, oh, I want to play that one, I want to play that one, I want to play that And it's just like, it just does not get sick of me. So, <laughs> I don't understand really how I got attracted to it, or when it really clicked. But it just did. So, right, it yeah. just happened. It just happened. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I fell in love with a girl. <laughs> <laughs> Who have been, I guess, some of your biggest influences personally? So not bands, but person? I guess either or. Would either or? Yeah. Well, like a singer, singer influence. My favorite singer is probably Sebastian Bach, Skid Row. Mm -hmm. He is really tight. He's a great singer. He's got his style. Is Him and the singer for the Scorpions, I really like his style too. So okay. them two really, like between the, the way they both sing, I've really taken kind of and molded in my own way. Because um, everybody's got their own style and you really can't mimic somebody else. But right. those singers right there, and Vince Neil too. Vince Neil of Motley Crue, I like his style too, especially on his early records. Yeah. Um, but I like the rasp mixed with the melodic style vocals. And those bands and those singers are like, really my biggest, biggest influences. Of course, I mean, Kip Wiener is playing downstairs right now. You can't go wrong. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's an amazing, amazing musician, so he's always been one of my favorites, too. Yeah. Oh, I like this scene. Me, too. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even, like, I wasn't paying much attention to what he was doing. All right, so... Or anything else that you want people to know about? Where can they check you guys out? Yep, yeah, uh, we have a website, TrixieTang.com, Facebook.com, TrixieTang Band. That's a, a popular one. So those are the main two that everybody really visits. So, and then I don't like to spread myself too thin with social media. I think social media is great, it's a great tool, but if bands focus so much on just social media, mm -hmm. they really lack their time and energy towards what's really important, and that's making music mm -hmm. and playing going old school, putting flyers up, hitting the streets, word of mouth, you know, working and going to see other bands play shows, you know, networking. It's mm -hmm. not all about just, oh, I got a band on Facebook and it's got 10,000 likes, I'm going to make it big. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's not how it works. And 
I'm old school. I like the way it used to be, and even though I didn't ever experience it, but I like the way it used to be with the flyers and this and that. Everybody goes to show, you know. Mm -hmm. So I'm going off topic, but you, find, you can you can find us on you can find us on Facebook. You can find us at TrixieTang.com, um, YouTube Trixie Tang Band. You can find us there. Um, we have our original album that we're working on right now. We're very excited for it. It's almost done. Um, we're in the midst of really fine tuning things right now and adding maybe one or two more songs. Um, we're excited about that, and our pretty much entire summer is full of shows. Um, so we're really pumped for that too. We're doing a lot of traveling now and uh, we just got back from Florida not too long ago. And that was very cool. We did a spring spring break show down there and that was that was great. And uh, we do a lot of bar shows. So mm -hmm. we don't just do shows like this where we can showcase original music. We right. do a lot of bar shows where we're playing four hours a night and it's all cover tunes. Um, so that's a way that we can get people to know who we are. Right. Um, we don't like people mistaking us that we're just a bar band, and I don't like that term bar band, because we like to do other things too, and we like to try to make it somewhere and, and write songs, and I'm not in any way, shape, or form dissing anybody who does play in the bars or is a bar band, because it's all fun, and it's a great time, but we want to use that avenue of playing in the bars as a way to get even further, and that's just one of the things I have to do, unfortunately, and if I could play shows like this every day of the week, I would, right. we just can't. Right. That's where we're at right now, and we're excited to see what the next chapter brings. And, and that's it. Awesome. <laughs>